we are sailing or motoring into a mist. It is hard to discern the sky from the sea. We're in Bodrum. Yay. Pretty cool. It's not always uh, trustworthy that Google Maps. <laughs> Welcome back everyone. If this is your first time here, thanks for stopping by. Good morning. It's uh about 4.15 in the morning and we are getting ready to leave Didham. We did Didham. <laughs> um, no, but it was great. We had a lot of really good time here and uh, didn't treat us right. We definitely had a male Temi, so we kind of got <clears throat> anchored here a little bit longer than we planned, but it's all good. We were really able to explore the town. And um, now we're on our way down to Bodrum. So the Maltemi is strong, as I've mentioned before, and so the middle of the night is a good time for the weather window before the seas blow up and the winds blow up and it becomes too gusty for us. I don't know how well this is going to show up, but when we are sailing or motoring into a mist, it is hard to discern the sky from the sea. Just crazy. Those flashing lights out there are fishing pods. So we definitely avoid those areas. A uh, fishing net, yeah. Thanks for correcting me. Yeah, it's not a pod, it's a fishing net that's actually dropped down. But uh, yeah. So this is our view for the next uh, few hours maybe. Then you can start to see the city on this side. So you can really see the difference there <laughs> of where the land is and where the land is not. <laughs> Pretty crazy. So this segment is uh, me having kind of a let's test it out kind of moment. We see a lot of other sailors out here with uh, long tether lines to their dinghies. And uh, we usually run a pretty short tether as you saw there in uh, the beginning part of the video. So we decided to lengthen it out, put it out about uh, 20, 25 feet. And uh, this is the transition of that moment into uh, a long tether line out our dinghy.
We're in Bodrum. Yay, it's pretty cool. We are actually about to go in and start to explore the town. Yesterday we dropped off some laundry, so we need to pick that up as well. And um, we're going to go check out the Bodrum Castle. It looks pretty cool. It's one of the um, UNESCO World History Sites. And let's go check it out. Are you hot? That's hot. <laughs> It's already over 90 and it's only 10 a.m. in the morning. 90 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> it got over 100 yesterday. It's warm up here in Turkey. <laughs> According to Wikipedia, Bodrum Castle is a historical fortification located in southwest Turkey in the port city of Bodrum, built in 1402 onwards by the Knights of St. John as the Castle of St. Peter or Petronium. A transnational effort, it has four towers known as the English, French, German, and Italian towers, bearing the name of the nations responsible for their construction. The chapel was built around 1407 and the first walls completed in 1437. The castle started reconstruction in the late 14th century, only to be taken over by the Islamic Ottoman Empire in 1523. The chapel was converted to a mosque and a minaret was added. The castle remained under the empire for almost 400 years. After remaining empty following World War I in the early 1960s, the castle became the home for the Bodrum Museum of Underwater Archaeology. In 2016, it was inscribed in the UNESCO tentative list of World Heritage Sites in Turkey. Pretty impressive site. In 1962, when the Turkish government decided to turn the castle into a museum for the underwater discoveries of ancient shipwrecks in the Aegean Sea, this has become the Bodrum Museum of Underwater Archaeology with a collection of amphoras, ancient glass, bronze, clay, and iron items. It is the biggest museum of its kind devoted to underwater archaeology. Most of its collection dates from underwater excavations carried out by the Institute Nautical Archaeology after 1960. These excavations were performed on several shipwrecks. The formal chapel houses an exhibition of vases and amphoras from the Mycenaean Age, which is the 14th to the 12th centuries BC, and findings from Bronze Age, around 2500 BC. The commercial amphoras give a historical overview of the development of amphoras and their varied uses. The Italian tower houses a collection of spanning many centuries in the coin and jewelry hall. 
Another exhibition room is devoted exclusively to the tomb of the Caring Princess, who died between 360 and 325 BC. The collection of ancient glass objects is one of the four largest ancient glass collections in the world. Finally, two ancient shipwrecks have been reconstructed. The Fatimi ship sunk in 1077 AD and the large Ulburan shipwreck from the 14th century BC. Trustworthy that Google Maps. <laughs> Not always. So we're trying to find a gas station so that we can fill up our spare tank, the spare tank, so that we have fuel for the outboard. And uh, we typed it into Google Maps, and we've been walking around for I don't know <laughs> 20, minutes. 20 minutes, following, following, to no avail. We asked for some help, so. <laughs> we'll see if this gets we'll us there. <laughs> so Google had us uh, full street aside. Nowhere and near. It was nowhere like, near, no. like in some residential area. So the person we asked said, go straight up this other street to the bus station and be on the other side. Very good direction. Found it first time. Yep, because here's our shell station straight right up away. here. Success. <laughs> Yay! Okay, Full tanks. Full. Good old shell station. And the best part? Wait. And the best part is we know exactly the way home. Yay. Straight on home. <laughs> Straight on. Walking uphill to go pick up the laundry. Yay! <laughs> So we've been sleeping in the berth for a little while in the forward berth with a mattress that doesn't really fit. So now we're retrofitting it. So we've marked it out and now we're going to cut it and it'll be a custom fit. It'll be great. Just an extra pad. <laughs> we kind of have stuff all over right now. Look at that. Coming to you. Coming to me. Running a test. I'm so sweaty right now. <laughs> We're running a test fit. So, like Shelly was saying, we just marked it out, cut it down. Now we've got a nice Foamy extra mattress, a little more comfort, and it fits. Yay! Yay! So there you go. Perfect. 104 degrees. Oof! It's freaking hot. We got it done. <laughs> Why don't we pick the hottest day? I don't, I don't know. know. Can't figure that it's one what out. What we do? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I cut it. What I thought was gonna work. It yeah. seems like it worked. So yeah. There you go. Now it's your job to. Uh, Sew some sheets. What? Ah. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Yay! It looks so much better. Here's our cutoff pieces. Custom fit. Yep. Matches. Yay. You look sweaty. I am sweaty. So sweaty. And the mattress, as you can see, is custom fit into the berth. Yay. Ah, my legs will fit now. Yeah. 
How cool is that? It's true. You excited? I am excited. Yeah. I'm so excited. <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed our video, like and subscribe. And don't forget to join us next week.